Beloved of God, praise the Lord. God is always good as by his nature. We thank God for every chance. And so let us thank him by word of prayer. Father God, we appreciate that you give us every opportunity, every day, every moment, every evening, every night, every moment that you give us to still breathe, to appreciate you for the gift of life. Thank you that we have remained, remained God in the midst of whatever it is, but thank you for giving us this chance. As we read through your word, to get more energized and encouraged in your service, pray the Lord you bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray the Lord, brethren. God is good, and I appreciate that he gave his word. His word is a lamp to our feet, so says the word of the Bible. And his word is life, because Jesus says it all, listening to him, talking about him, walking according to his ways, is life. And so we continue with this word. I know many people have different forms now. There is print word in here, and then there is electronic, and then there is, you know, whatever people could be having now because the technology keeps uh, changing things. But let us dive into this one that I'm also holding here and you can open yours, read, and get encouraged in one or another. Now, we have been talking about what the Bible says about situations, what the Bible says about individuals, people, and another thing that actually the Bible mentions. And so, this season, we thought that we talk about persons, individuals that make up the Bible. There are those who wrote, but there are those who acted. There are those who said things. And by the Spirit of God, that prevailed. These things were written down. And the scribes kept putting them down, down organizing them properly for our use. And so we read these people, we read about these people, and as I've always said, I say it again, what lesson do you pick? For me, my desire is, as you walk around the world, around the earth, in your village, in your locality, in your, wherever you are, what is it that you do that pleases God above all? Because the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Within you, love God. Now, the Bible says that you love God, then love your neighbor as you love yourself. And meaning that your people can also give testimony about you. Now, the things that you read about these people were the things that they said, they were things that they acted, the people were able to see and heard. And so, written down, and we read about them, we speak about them to help us modify ourselves. Pray the Lord that actually these personalities enable us for our own modification as you go about with your work in whichever capacity that you are. Because do we talk about children? There are children here. Do we talk about the youth? Yes, there are the youths here. Do we talk about women? There are women here. Do we talk about men? There are men here. Do we talk about leaders, political leaders, there are kings, there are, you know, all of them are here. And whatever, whoever did good is here, whoever did bad is also here. All is for the lessons. Do we talk about religious leaders, prophets, priests, evangelists, name them, they are here. Do we talk about false prophets today? Do we talk about genuine people that speak about the word of God today? These examples are here. Now, this Bible is a sea that you can't finish because everything, is it about nature? Is it about human beings? Is it about space? Is it about what? Everything is there. So now, friends, we talk about these people because there's a lot that they will learn from them. Now, I wanted to give that hint because everything that we read about, that we see happening in the world, actually we have lessons that we pick now. The person that we are now continuing with here, having mentioned all those very many things, is a person hidden also, obscure, but is hidden in the book of Job. Now Job 
had three friends. Job had a wife. You know, first of all, Job himself, his wife, his three friends, and we are talking about all of them. And there is a lesson, a lesson that we picked from them. Now, here comes this other one, also obscure, so to say, but it's called Elihu. Now, this, the, the, pronouncement, the, pronounce, the pronunciation differs. Some people call him Eliyahu, some people call him Elihu, some people call him Elihu, but it's a name. And he starts his journey from Job chapter 32. Job 32, this is where we begin this person. And I just want to read, to set base, I mean basis for us, a basis for us, we are going to read some verses here. Job 32. And the Bible says that Elihu in anger rebukes Job. And he says, this, then these three men ceased answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. But the anger of Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, of the family of Ram, burned against Job. His anger burned because he justified himself before God. And in verse 3 he says, And his anger burned against his three friends because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited to speak to Job because they were years older than he. And there is a point there. Years older than he. Now verse 5, And when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his anger burned. So Elihu the son of Barachel, the Buzite, spoke out and said, I am, a, I am young in years, and you are old. Therefore I was shy and afraid to tell you what I think. I thought age and should speak. I thought age should speak, and increased years should teach wisdom. But it is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. The abundant in years may not be wise nor may elders understand justice so i say listen to me i too will tell what i think in verse 10 behold i waited for your words i listened to your reasonings when you repondered what to say i even paid close attention to you indeed there was no one who refuted Job, not one of you who answered his words. Now, you can read on and on and on and on. Now, in verse 20, I just want to jump to those ones. He said, let me speak that I may, be, that I may get relief. Let me open my, my lips and answer. Let me now be partial to no one, nor flatter any man, for I do not know how to flatter, else my maker would soon take me away. Now, this is the person, Elihu, chapters, there are six chapters that are devoted to him. From this chapter 32, chapter 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37, devoted to this person. But my interest is, he comes last. And the Bible is talking about him as one who was younger than the rest. The rest, Job himself and his three, three friends were older. And, but before I say anything else, remember, the name Elihu, Elihu, is my God is he. That's the meaning. You can also put it further and say, he is my God himself. And so we belong to him. So the name Elihu is he is my God himself. Nobody else but he himself. Now he speaks coming later after the three Job, Job himself, the three friends, Bildad, uh, Zohar, and the, the other one, uh, Eliphaz, they have spoken. And his wife had also spoken at some moment. Now this young man comes into picture and he gives his opinion. You already know this entire story, you keep reading. If you don't know, you get back and read. Now, he's one of the characters that come here, following what the other friends had said. He followed the interaction, and some 
writers have called him a bystander. He was listening, praise the Lord. And I like the way he did it. I just pick something from what he did. A bystander listening. And he says, I'm not coming to flatter when he comes to speak. I'm not going to be partial. So his word is come to Job, the one that actually the, the, the person at the center of this story. His word is also run to each of these three friends. And so he remains partial in the middle there. The reason why we're reading that I, I don't want to be partial, I don't want to flatter anybody. And so his anger burned against his the, the, the friends. He tried to prove himself before God, and you know, he was putting his point clear to the three men. And he also uh, he exercised restraint, but he also spoke words that reprimanded Job because his idea was none of them was answering each other, that there was things that they were spoken and maybe they were adding insult to injury. And so he listens very clearly. He listens very intently. He exercised patience. He exercised respect, praise the Lord. Never hurried to respond. I just looked at him and I said there must be a lesson for somebody here. If that somebody is not me, is you. If that somebody is not you, is me. Listening, being patient, and being respectful. I picked this for those that are younger in age. And the Bible encourages us in speaking. And I will give that verse at one moment. You know? Being patient with what you have and you're also burning with a suggestion. Elihu gives a yardstick here. So that his point comes clear and singled out at the right moment, at the right time, I mean, and spoken by the right person. So he speaks in these chapters and remember that after he has spoken in the three chapters, I mean the seven chapters that I've mentioned, finally God, the one that comes in, in chapter, um, the next chapters, he winds up the discussion, he winds up the conversation, he winds up the theological debate, and now God faces Job as a person. And there's a lesson there, friends, that actually we may have people speak very many things, but when God interfaces with you, it's by you. Pray the Lord. That he never, I mean, you, you know, he, he, God was speaking to each of these individuals. And so we may involve ourselves in the debate, we may involve ourselves in, you know, theological conversations, but when it came to Job to answer questions, he was by himself. And so the reason why, as we involve in the theological debates, pastors, bishops, speaking big and, you know, uh, they are so flamboyant in their, in their speeches and things like that. But listen, when time comes, God comes us down, praise the Lord. And Job, his reasonings, his debates, his three friends, debates and things like that, when he, God spoke, he, he, one on one, praise the Lord. So let us take time and think through what this man went through and what this young man brought about. Now, some few lessons, I've already started giving them anyway. But we discover that God uses people. God does not use trees. God does not use stones. God does not use, but he uses. Um, what he can use situations, I mean, even animals and things like that, but God can use anybody. Now, this young man comes up and he's used by God, younger in age, just like God used some other younger people. Let me mention some younger people in the Old Testament. I just want to mention two anyway. One is a child, Samuel. Young in age, but God used him and sanity as a prophet returned, sanity returned 
because he was a prophet of God. And another young person who claims he's young, he does not know how to speak, you know, you know him, Jeremiah. And now this younger person among the elders, Job an elder, the three men, his friends an elder. And so we want to mention to India friends that God can use you. You may be younger, but God can use you. I've said this before. I say it again. And we also discover that actually from Elihu, he points to the right direction. He points his conversation, God direction, God way. And the reason why he humbled himself first to receive the words so that he could be able to, um, to speak sense. And I want to ask anybody that before you speak, think through and speak sense. Elihu spoke sense and immediately his, his presentation was done. God spoke. Praise the Lord. And so even when he shot at Job, who needed um, to be confronted other than being lectured to, he was actually bringing out facts. He had looked, he listened, and uh, God gave him the words. And he had waited for the right time to come. So sometimes we hurry with the words. But I just want to encourage us that take time, think about what I want to say, ask yourself a few questions. And I've been helped that not in every situation that actually should come first, but sometimes you need to wait to hold your time and for relevance's sake to be relevant, pray the Lord. For relevance's sake, so actually you come timely and God uses you at that time. And I have, I thank God that actually he, we have, I'm learning something from this young man, Elihu. And he waited to speak. Remember that he was handling elders. And when you are with elders, you know, may God give you wisdom. God gave Elihu wisdom. And just like we read in um, First Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, First Timothy, there is... Something that actually Paul counsels uh, Timothy when he is interfacing, when he is with the elders. Paul tells Timothy uh, something here. First Timothy chapter 5, which um, verses 1 and 2, he says, Counsel to the younger people. Do not sharply rebuke an older man, but rather appeal to him as a father. To the younger men as your brothers, the older women as your mothers, and the younger men, women as sisters in all purity. In all purity, pray the Lord. Now here there is something that actually I learn that actually Elihu or Elihu, Elihu speaking among the elders, he had something that actually maybe as these things were given be compiled, they could have actually, with one or another, could they could have informed Paul. In his writing to the younger team of the year. And so, even when he was angry, even when he was burned, he burned with anger, he directed it to the right people at the right time, but he had kept his patience and he exercised respect. So, so to say, situations, people might be in a situation and it's confused. You can't explain what it is, but it needs to be sorted out. Listen to me, that Elihu comes as the corrector of the discussion that had been on. And I pray that God makes something in your life. That in one way or another you become the corrector of something that you know has been on, but it needs need a solution. That something that can pull God down, and not just pulling him down, but enable to give way that God speaks in a situation. Jobs. Uh, situation after the three men had spoken Elihu speaks and what follows is God speaks thereafter his presence comes into picture so may God who used Elihu use you in whichever situation and so actually something to create a difference in the lives of people and so this young man young as he was he actually broke the ice. 
he became the corrector of things. And so, one other thing that actually you discover is that in the midst of reprimand, Elihu proves himself to be, I mean, he's a friend. You know, there is rebuke with friendship, rebuke with love. But when you do it with anger and, I mean, spoil things, it may not be helpful at all. He gave friendly rebukes to Job. He showed empathy and sincerity. You know, in one of these days, it becomes a rare ingredient, rebuking with love, rebuking with care. Many, many people are consumed by the situation, shouting, quarreling, you know, using a harshness, using the voice that is harsh, even when it is a correct thing, I've picked a lesson, friends, that actually there's something here that we need to be, to rebuke with sobriety, being sober, which is very difficult indeed, I acknowledge, very, very difficult. But this young man shows us something here, being friendly, rebuke friendly, but not harshness, not piercing to kill, but correcting an error. So the reason why I picked about him is because eventually he brought about repentance on the side of Job. You know, when God started speaking, and after he finished and God started speaking, Job had to fall down in ashes and repent. Chapter 38, when God spoke to, to, to Job and uh, he, he asks him to, I mean, a few questions, and Job shakes, Job quakes, and it was a build-up of the story, and Elihu comes towards the climax of it. And so, friends, I pick it from there that there could be words of correction mingled with love, mingled with care, and that could, be, could bring about a difference. We are administrators, we are parents, we are sons and daughters. But Elihu gives us something to, uh, to take home. So Elihu was concerned that actually spoke for God's position. And I just want to urge us to spend time, know what God's mind is. And you, cannot, you can only know God's mind by reading God's word. Take time into God's word. Now, his words helped to bring about repentance. He did not rebuke to kill, but his words came, were spot on, and something changed that Job realized and God speaking spoke. By the way, you realize actually when God was rebuking the situation, the rebuke went to Job and his three friends, but this young man, when you read through, you discover that actually um, God builds on what he has done. Now, may God use you, like he used Elihu, to change, to be the corrector of any situation that is. Now, finally, as a young person, Elihu spoke. And in our situation, in our generations, in church, permit young people to speak. But they must speak sense, pray the Lord. Elihu spoke, but he spoke sense. Now, young people, we permit, let the young people speak. Let give young people space. And we praise God that actually young people are on the platform. They are doing great things in the country. They are doing great things in the church. But also, because of the energy, because of the wrong motives, there are young people who do wrong things. And, but we encourage the good that is in us to do better. And so Job was silent after when Eli was speaking. The silence there and God picks up from there. Friends, pray the Lord. They're actually the young people, the young person. There. So there can be wisdom in both the young and the old. Now Eli who puts it here, the young and the old. Now there can be wisdom. There are some people who rebuke young people. That, what, can, what do they know also? They chase them away. But sometimes there can come words, God directed. And, and so I just want to encourage the young and the old to flow 
together. Like in this story, we have the old and the young, Elihu, and the female, the woman also comes in there. I mean to flow together, pray the Lord, and give glory to God. And so in second, in first Timothy, again, um, this is this is where, where Paul urges Timothy not to not to let anyone look down upon them, upon them, upon him because he was young. But Paul encourages the young Timothy to set a good example. And so I just want to urge all young people everywhere to set a good example. Please set a good example. Be exemplary. And in Ephesians 6, 1 to 4, it talks about children, obey your parents. And from this commandment, number five, is a blessing. Friends, Elihu, if there's anything, I have learned something from this young man. Will you pick something that actually your debate will be a reasonable debate? Your life will be reasonable life that will bring sanity in the society, that will bring order in society, that will bring correction in society, that will bring sobriety in society. Wherever you are, young or old, we learn something from here and may Elihu's life and speech and conversation and interaction and presence create some difference in the midst of whatever it is. So may God help you, may God help me that my presence, your presence, wherever it is, that actually there will be something channeled towards order, towards correction, towards repentance, towards orderliness. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.